Join us on the Devil's Rest Loop, a top hike near Portland that includes six waterfalls and open Columbia River Gorge views. It also seems time to say that if you've been following our channel, you may have noticed certain changes between last summer and now. And no, it wasn't just the post-hike pancakes or the holidays. We're expecting a new adventure buddy to join our team in late April or early May. We'll still be making videos, so remember to give this a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more adventures in the Pacific Northwest. The Devil's Rest Loop Hike begins from the Multnomah Falls Trailhead, about 30 to 40 minutes drive east of Portland. As Oregon's most famous waterfall, the Multnomah Falls lot is often packed. Here's the parking lot at 9.30 a.m. on a Saturday in February. We were excited to find a number of open spots. The Multnomah Falls Lodge near the trailhead has restrooms and snacks. While Multnomah Falls is a magnificent waterfall, I found that crowds can detract from the wildness and solitude of the waterfall experience. That said, don't let the crowd at the entrance dissuade you from this hike because the Devil's Rest Loop is an 8.3 mile loop hike and most of the Multnomah Falls visitors won't go past the first half mile or so. After crossing the bridge in the middle of Multnomah Falls, the trail begins to climb via switchbacks up toward the top of the falls. There's road noise here, but you'll catch striking views of the Columbia River and of course the falls. A short detour from the loop trail takes you to the top of Multnomah Falls, which is definitely worth a look. The perspective from the top of the falls is a little dizzying, to be honest. The Devil's Rest Loop Hike continues past the cutoff for the top of Multnomah Falls, following Multnomah Creek upstream past three more waterfalls. Despite a devastating wildfire in 2017, the creekside microenvironment is lush and full of moss and ferns.
As we approached the third waterfall of the hike, the sunlight catching the waterfall mist made the whole forest glow. The route then climbs away from Multnomah Creek with its many waterfalls and traverses a hillside where the aftermath of the fire is starkly clear. Well, it's really nice that we got a sunny day that's in the winter because it's quite wet still. I think probably in the summer it's not as nice as this because it'd be fairly dry. But views of the Columbia River and the tops of snowy mountains begin to materialize through the burned trees. Devil's Rest first appears on the trail signs here, where the route begins to climb in earnest again, up into the higher bluffs above the gorge. Up in the bluffs near Devil's Rest, the terrain cycles rapidly between lush forest and totally burned sections. It's a little bizarre. Devil's Rest itself isn't so much a viewpoint as a jumble of moss-covered boulders in the forest. On the way down from Devil's Rest, the trail again oscillates between lush forest and totally open burned areas. The contrast is a little alarming.
For the final stretch of the hike, the trail circles back into lush creekside ravines, ending by passing two more waterfalls, Fairy Falls and Joaquina Falls, before returning to the Multnomah Falls trailhead. We started feeling all the elevation change on this hike at the end when it steeply descends through a series of switchbacks. My knees were not a huge fan. I'd say the descent at the end is the hardest part. But at the end you'll pass the huge Joaquina Falls waterfall. From the base of Joaquina Falls, there's a short connector trail to return to the Multnomah Falls trailhead to complete the Devil's Rest Loop. For a shorter five mile loop that still visits all the waterfalls but misses Devil's Rest itself and the gorge views from the high bluffs, check out our video link in the upper right corner. Thanks for joining us on the Devil's Rest Loop. Remember to give this a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time.